Hello everyone. For those of you new to the U of A, welcome. And for all the alumni and faculty, welcome back. To all the judges and personnel working on putting together this year's senior design, we would like to say a sincere thank you for continuing this work. Well, with that, let's jump in. We are the Metalheads. My name is Carlos Weiler. Hi, I'm Maddie Coates. And I'm Jacob Smutzer. And I'm Kira Zeider. We're team 19129, and we were tasked with updating the unit operations laboratory space for the chemical and environmental engineering department here at the University of Arizona. Our project was split into two parts. The first part was to design, build, and test a hydraulic friction loss experiment for senior environmental engineering students. When students are in our lab, we want them to calculate major and minor frictional losses in a pipe system and compare them to theoretical calculations. We estimated that the entire process of implementation would take up the majority of our semester. The second part of the project was to design a tankless cold water process for the department's undergraduate lab space. Our plan was to begin this design near the end of our hydraulics lab build. The driving force of fluid mechanics is a pressure gradient caused by the dissipation of mechanical energy due to friction. To analyze frictional losses within a system, students will start with the mechanical energy balance. The equation is composed of the major energy sources and sinks, such as kinetic energy and frictional losses. To determine frictional losses, students will calculate the Reynolds number, which is the dimensionless ratio of the inertial forces to the viscous forces of the fluid. Depending on the value of this number, students can categorize the flow of the fluid into two major sections, laminar and turbulent. On the left is the velocity profile of a laminar fluid, where at the wall of the pipe, the velocity is zero, and at the center, the velocity is highest. On the bottom right is the turbulent velocity profile, where eddy currents are formed and there's not a defined point of max velocity. Using this Reynolds number, students can calculate the fanning friction factor. This factor takes into account the relationship between the pipe material and flow regime of the fluid. Friction is increased when the fluid flows through a valve or fitting. Once the factor is calculated, students will have enough information to calculate the total frictional losses of the experiment. This is the first part of the process flow diagram for a hydraulic experiment. Our ultimate design involved two main sections, a straightaway section and a fittings board. The straightaway section includes three 16-foot long pipe sections along with a PVC return line. The goal of this section is to allow students to calculate a pressure drop across a long segment of pipe with no fittings or unions. Pressure taps are added in the beginning and end of the long pipe section to add pressure sensors to be programmed onto an interface. This is the design for the fittings board that we have created. We decided to have four different sections for this board. There are two different lines dedicated to valves and elbows and two lines dedicated to visualization demonstrations. One of them is a flow regime demonstration that will show the difference between laminar and turbulent flow. We designed and tested a bubbler system which will inject air into a stream of water that will flow through a piece of clear PVC. The flow regime of the water will change according to the pump setting which will alter how the bubbles flow through the tube. This video shows the difference between bubbles flowing through laminar and turbulent flow. On the left, the bubbles flow smoothly in the laminar flow, while on the right, the bubbles are mixed around in the turbulent flow. This is very similar to what students will be able to see during this demonstration portion. One element our team added was a cavitation demonstration. Cavitation is caused by a rapid change in pressure resulting in a phase change from liquid to gas. The animation provides a simplified view of how the process occurs. As the liquid flows down the pipe, the pressure gradually decreases. At point C, the pressure dramatically drops due to an increase in frictional losses inducing a phase change. Here is our demonstration piece, where at the Venturi nozzle, the liquid is being vaporized to a gas. Our build progress before the COVID-19 outbreak consisted of three pipes being built and mounted onto the Unistruts in the Harshberger building. We're continuing after the stay order ordered by the Chemical Engineering Department. Pressure taps were soldered to the 16-foot pipe sections for the pressure sensors. And here is the finished right away section, which has six pressure taps and three pressure gauges for the analysis of the lab. The fittings board section has been mounted to the board with the first row with the short radius and long radius 90s and the 45 degree fittings. 
Second row is completed with four different valves to measure pressure drops across each. And the cavitation unit and flow regime are also attached to the board along with the pump and water tank. The pressure taps are added on the back side of the board with the pressure sensors attached and ready to be wired. Using LabVIEW, the students can analyze the raw pressure data in real time. The code is a virtual representation of the straightaway section, allowing the students to see the results on the computer rather than recording the values from the pressure gauges. The second interface, the fittings board, allows students to calculate the pressure drop of each valve as well as the Reynolds number and volumetric flow rate. All the data is programmed to be sent to an Excel file after the experiment is completed so students can compare the theoretical values to the experimental ones. As of right now, this is the completed version of the hydraulics experiment. The hardware for the fittings board is all assembled, mounted on the cart, and connected to the straightaway section. We will continue to code in LabVIEW in order to finish the data acquisition program. When students and faculty are allowed to return to campus, all of the pressure sensors and flow sensor will need to be wired and then hooked up to the data acquisition system. Once this is completed, testing will need to be done prior to student use. As mentioned earlier, the second part of our project is to design a tankless cold water system to provide cooling water to our experiments down in the undergraduate lab space that we call the pit, like the distillation column on the left. In the pit area right now, the cold water system is located under the stairs, as you can see in this floor plan. However, due to the installation of a lift down to the lab space, the current cold water system must be moved. This is what the new floor plan will look like with the lift going next to the stairs and the cold water system being moved to the southwest corner of the pit area. Our criteria included sizing multiple heat exchangers in parallel, along with pumps, temperature and pressure monitoring systems, and pipes to meet the needs of the three major experiments in the lab space. Dr. Ogden and facilities management provided us the numbers for the cold side, while Dr. Brush provided the data for the hot side of the system. Using sulfur to determine the necessary mass flow rates and aspen to size the heat exchangers, we were able to design the entire system using three pumps on the hot side. We were also able to provide a rough cost estimate to the department, including a price sheet with the major pieces of equipment already researched. Our hydraulics lab provides senior environmental engineering students with a water-focused lab. Since the degree program is water remediation heavy, this gives students a great idea of some basic calculations they can expect in industry. Also, the same concepts that we use to design the lab are taught in sophomore level chemical engineering classes. So there's a possibility of applying this lab to that degree program in the future. The design of our cold water process allows for the undergraduate lab space to be accessible to everyone. And whenever faculty and staff are permitted back on campus, the design is ready to be implemented. Thank you so much for your time. Stay safe and bear down.